Hi, my name is Rama Patel and I have created this video on Dubai. I have compiled photos and facts about my experiences on a family trip to Dubai in 2004. My video begins with a short YouTube video. Dubai is Las Vegas on steroids. In one hour, it does what it took Mother Nature 10,000 years. You just imagine these guys keep building it until it breaks through the Earth's atmosphere. The challenge is we're the limits of our imagination. Dubai is one of the seven states that makes up the United Arab Emirates, which is located in the Middle East. A narrow widening creek divides the city into two parts, the southern part called Bur Dubai, which has a traditional culture, and the northern area, Deira, which has a busy and more modern culture. The Al Shindag Tunnel, which runs under the creek, connects the two halves of the city. Dubai is recognized as a commercial and tourism capital of the United Arab Emirates and is globally regarded as one of the most sophisticated, futuristic, and cosmopolitan cities in the world. It is an Arab Muslim society with the fastest growing foreign population and it has successfully developed harmony through ethnic diversity. In my opinion, Dubai is just a mini America in the sense that just like America, Dubai is a melting pot of many different cultures. Of the many different groups of people that reside in Dubai, the major ones include Muslims, Hindus, Christians, and Sikhs. Although Dubai is an amazing city, and I recommend everyone go there at one point in their lives, there is one huge downfall, the weather. The climate in Dubai is desert-like. Temperatures range from lows of 50 degrees Fahrenheit to extreme summer highs of 120 degrees Fahrenheit, and it is very humid there. I remember when we walked out of the airport doors and walked over to where my dad's friend was waiting on us, the first thing he asked my dad was if he needed to go to the hospital because he was sweating so much he looked like he had just had a heart attack. My favorite activity that my family and I did while in Dubai was a desert safari, which included dune bashing, Sunset photography, camel rides, henna painting, belly dancing, shisha, more commonly known as hookah, and a buffet dinner. The tour departed in the afternoon across the desert of Dubai with several photo stops during the travel through the dunes. The first destination was a camel farm. Next, we stopped to watch the beautiful sunset before reaching the campsite where we had the opportunity to ride camels, sandboard, and try out henna designs. As the dark night approached, everyone enjoyed a delicious barbecue dinner and shisha, accompanied by a belly dancer performing around the campfire. This is a clip from when we went dune bashing. If you can't handle roller coasters, I don't recommend you do this activity, because it's definitely more intense than a roller coaster. You honestly feel like you're either going to fly out the windshield or tumble down the huge hills in the SUV. But the amazing drivers had everything in control, so we all made it out safely. After an hour or so of rough rides, the driver pulled over so that you could take photos. Once we reached the campsites, we were allowed to partake in all the available activities, which included riding the camel, getting henna tattoos, and smoking shisha. Shisha is a single or multi-stemmed instrument used for smoking tobacco, in which the smoke is cooled and filtered by passing through water. Originally from India, hookah has gained a lot of popularity in the Middle East. In the Arab world, people smoke it as a part of their culture and tradition. When the smoker is finished, either the hose is placed back on the table, signifying that it is available, or it is handed from one user to the next, folded back on itself, so that the mouthpiece is not pointing at the recipient as a sign of respect. Also, another rule of thumb when smoking is that your feet should not be placed or propped on a table in a position in which the sole or bottom of your feet can be seen, as in the air world, this is a gesture of disrespect. As another source of entertainment, there was a belly dancer performing around the campfire, and she would call on individuals from the crowd to come join her. Of, one, of which one of them happened to be my younger cousin. Belly dance is the Western term for traditional Middle Eastern dance styles. 
Belly dance takes many different forms depending on country and region, both in costume and dance style. And new styles have been invented in the West as its popularity has spread globally. There have been there are two types of belly dances. One of them, rag saragi, which is a style more familiar to Westerners and performed in restaurants and shisha bars around the world. It is more commonly performed by female dancers, but is also sometimes danced by men. Rag saki is a solo improvisational dance, although students often perform choreographed dances in a group. The other type of belly dance is rag baladi, which is the folk style, danced socially by men and women of all ages in Middle Eastern countries, usually at festive occasions such as weddings. One theory for the origin of belly dancing is that the belly dance was originally danced by women for other women to demonstrate or ease childbirth. Then we got to enjoy our freshly cooked barbecue meal that was traditional of Arab food. They serve kebabs, shawarma, and falafel. This is a photo of the dish kebab, which many of you may be familiar with. It is basically seasoned meat on a stick with vegetables such as peppers and onions that is grilled and served with lemon. This is a photo of a dish called shawarma, which is made with lamb or chicken mixed with tomatoes, pickles, garlic sauce, and fries. Then the mixture is wrapped in a small Arabic roti. Shawarma is very similar to kebab. And this is a photo of falafel, which is the so-called Arabic french fry. It looks like a cutlet. They are made out of mixing chickpeas and different spices and then deep frying it and serving it as a side dish or an Arabic roti with yogurt spread, lettuce, tomatoes, and cucumber. One of my most memorable experiences related to food in Dubai was when we went to a restaurant on the third or fourth day and each of us ordered chole puri, which is a chickpea curry, which you see on your right, and Indian bread, which is on the left. In America, it usually comes in proportions where the bread is about the size of a pita bread and the curry is sufficient enough for two people. But in Dubai, the curry was only enough for one person and the bread was twice as big as the dinner plate set on the table for us to eat on. Another activity that we took part in while in Dubai was a shopping festival. Dubai attracts millions of visitors from all around the world during this time. One of the main sites that is key to the Dubai shopping festival is Al Riga, which is located in the heart of the eastern Dubai, Deira. Al Riga is a residential and commercial center. This is a photo of Al Riga, and the Planet Pepsi you see behind the fountain is where most of the activities for the shopping festival are held. Another place we went to during the shopping festival was the Dubai Gold Souk, famously known for its gold and diamonds. The souk is located in the heart of Eastern Dubai's commercial business district, Deira, more specifically in Al Dagaya. The souk consists of over 300 retailers that trade almost exclusively in jewelry. All the shops were blazing with the shine of gold ornaments and diamond sets. This place is every man's nightmare, but every woman's heaven. There is no such thing as window shopping here. Trust me, my mom and I tried. There's just so much beautiful jewelry that you can't find in America that you just have the urge to buy so much. One downfall of this booming economy is that the country encourages businesses to hire people from other poor countries to come there and work. They have them sign contracts that are decades long and then take their passports. These poor people are promised a certain pay, but the companies neglect to tell them that they are deducting their cost of living from their paychecks, leaving them virtually penniless. When the workers strike as a result, they are jailed since protesting is illegal in Dubai. This is the hotel we stayed at while we were there. It is called Jumeirah Beach Hotel, located on Jumeirah Beach. It is so beautiful and modern on the inside. This five-star hotel and wave-shaped hotel complement the sail-shaped Burj Al Arab, which is adjacent to the Jumeirah Beach Hotel. The Burj Al Arab is the only seven-star hotel in the United Arab Emirates. The interior is absolutely breathtaking. When I think of luxury and wealth, I immediately think of this hotel. 
The luxury of this hotel starts when you get on the ramp to reach the hotel doors, where there are two sets of lions on each side of the marble ramp that shoot fire and water across and over the cars. And once you're there, a chauffeur-driven Rolls Royce is offered to the guest as a means of transportation to their other destinations in Dubai. Every evening at sunset, a light show is projected onto the fabric-covered facade facing in towards the land. And the cool part about the hotel is that the inside looks like a honeycomb. Both these hotels are located on Jumeirah Beach, and if you thought the Bahamas had amazingly clear water, you were completely wrong. This entire beach looked like one of those desktop backgrounds. It was absolutely breathtaking, despite the unbearable heat. The water was so clear, you could see everything in the water. Terribly hot, there were many people laying out on the beach. However, this freedom is soon to change. Although it was unbearably hot, there were still many people laying out on the beach. However, this freedom is soon to change. Just recently, Dubai is in the process of passing a set of behavioral guidelines that are aimed at visitors to the Gulf City. The restrictions will include an end to dancing, kissing, hugging in public, and limiting bikinis and skimpy clothing to private resorts. These changes are partly in response to the British couple that was convicted of having sexual relations on the local beach last year. It's not surprising that locals would fear an erosion of their conservative culture. In terms of clothing for men in the business world, they are always either suited up or in a shirt and trousers. But their style is always very sharp and modern. Everything is well fitted. Traditionally, men wear Gandura, which is the long light cloak, and Gadura, which is the cloth that covers the head with an igal or black rope that holds it in place. For women, it is encouraged to not wear two figure hugging clothes and to cover up their flesh. Usually women are seen in abayas, which are the long black gowns, along with a shella, which is a headpiece used to cover the face with only a slit for the eyes. However, in some regions of Dubai, women can get away with Western clothing as long as their skin is covered. Although most of the experiences I spoke about in this presentation were all tourist-based, my trip to Dubai made me realize how much willpower other nations and countries have. From all the things I spoke about, you probably wouldn't guess that 50 years ago, Dubai used to just be desert land, but now it is developed into this rich country. However, Aside from all the wealth, it is important to note that their Arabic culture in Dubai has been preserved despite all the wealth. I know from personal experiences in America that when individuals begin to make money, some tend to forget about their culture and their values. But it's amazing to see how strong the faith and culture of the Arabs was. The things that some of us take for granted are highly appreciated there or in many countries overseas. And the only way one can experience another's culture and really learn about it is to go visit the country of interest, just like my family and I did with Dubai.